All right, so we're going round and round in circles here because this time we're going to talk about the normal approximation to the binomial distribution. So you should remember the binomial distribution, uh, Bernoulli trials, success, failure. We're going to look at one of those graphs and you should notice something about it now that you look at it a second time. So we're starting off small here. We've got four trials. Probability of success is 0 0.64 and we get this nice little histogram going on. Now, I'm just going to increase the number of trials here from four to, say, six. Okay, and you can see here, I'll just colour them in. Okay, and you can see it's starting to look like a little more curvy. Let's change it to like 20, 20 trials. And now, hopefully, you're starting to see that it's sort of curving up here and it's not symmetrical, but it looks pretty close to being symmetrical. Uh, let's get really crazy and go up to 200. And at 200, you can see, one, it looks fairly symmetrical. Maybe not quite, but really close. But two, it also looks a lot like a bell curve. It looks a lot like a normal distribution. So we come to this. N is large enough and P isn't too close to zero or one. A binomial distribution can be approximated by a normal distribution. So just two things here. If n is large enough, we moved our way up to 200 trials. That's a large n value. That's a lot of times to, to do a trial. Um, also, you can notice that our p value is 0 0.64, which is the second part. Um, a binomial, uh, not too close to 0 or 1. Because if I go back there, and change that probability of success to like 0 0.95, it stops being as symmetrical. You can see it doesn't really have that nice symmetry that our, our last one uh, did. I'll just colour it in a bit differently. It doesn't really have that nice symmetry. Similarly, if I went from like 0 to success of 0 0.10, Again, it's not as nicely symmetrical as it could be. So this is great because binomial distributions are a huge pain to calculate. Imagine if you had to do a binomial distribution for 200 trials. It would look just absolutely horrible. You'd be dealing with such large powers. If you had to do a cumulative distribution, um, you'd be adding large powers over and over and over again. It'd just be a disaster. So if we can just use the normal distribution, which is way easier for binomials, then that would be great. So now we just need uh, two things. We need a mean and we need a standard deviation. Because if we have a binomial distribution and we want to approximate it using a normal distribution, then we need a mean and a standard deviation to do it. Approximate a binomial distribution as a normal distribution, let the mean equal NP. So in my First example, uh, if you've got 200 trials and a probability of success of 0 0.64, multiply those two together and you'll have your mean. All right, that's our mean. What about our standard deviation? And your standard deviation is equal to the square root of NP bracket 1 minus P. Uh, I would often write this in a different way, square root of NPQ, which is the number of trials the probability of success and the probability of failure because failure is just one minus p. Um, so in my example, that would be the square root of um, 200 times 0 0.64 times 0 0.36, which is probably a failure. Um, now, this works, but you might just need to do a little bit of a tester to make sure. Good approximation if NP is greater than five and NQ is greater than five as well. So in my example, uh, 200 times 0.64 is gonna be like 120. That's way more than five. So that's a good approximation. Uh, NQ, 200 times 0 0.36 is going to be 60, 70, something like that. That's way more than five. So obviously my example is, it's a good approximation. Now that makes me think, what about that example that I said isn't a good example? Well, let's see. I said, uh, what if, if the probability was like 0 0.95, um, then that might not be a good example. That might not be a good use of this. 
Well, maybe I'm wrong. So let's take a look. Um, NP, so 200 times 0 0.95, that's 190. That's way more than five. Um, 200 times 0 0.05, um, that's actually 10, which is more than five. So actually, you probably can do uh, a normal distribution. You probably can approximate this one, even though P is very close to one, we are greater than five, so it might work out. It might be a good approximation. Not a great approximation, but a, an okay one. As an example of doing this, it is known that 30% of people like coriander. So that's our P success is like in coriander. If 1,000 people are surveyed, find the probability that between 270 and 330 people like coriander. So it's a binomial distribution, but we can approximate it as a normal distribution. So our mean, let's get my pen here. My mean is equal to um, the number of trials, 1,000, times uh, probability of success, 0 0.3. So that's uh, 300. Now, my standard deviation is going to be equal to the square root of NPQ. So that's uh, 1,000 times uh, success, 0 0.3, times um, Q, which is 0 0.7. All right, you can type that into a calculator somewhere. And that's the square root of 210. And I'll just leave it like that. I don't need to, if I put it into a decimal, that's going to make it worse. So I'm going to keep it there. All right, so from here, um, I can now just find, I can draw this as a normal distribution. So a mean of 300, a standard deviation of the square root of 210, and I want to find the probability that between 270 and 330 people like that thing. So I'm finding the probability that 270 is less than x, which is less than 330. All right, and then I just get out my calculator and do some stats mode. Go into stats mode, uh, distribution, normal distribution, NCD. Now I'm going to need a lower value of 270, an upper value of 330, um, and a standard deviation, the square root of 210, and a mean of 300. And I'll draw that. Okay, and it looks like the probability is 0 0.9616. 0 0.9616. Obviously, you type in anything that you put into, you copy and paste anything that you put into your calculator, but there is our answer. If you've got a binomial distribution question and the sample is large enough and P isn't too close to 0 or 1, you can use the normal distribution to find your answer.